Hello there, men, and welcome to the Masculinism Movement channel, a place for men to be men and talk about masculinity and men's issues. I'm your host, Brian Crawl, and today I'm going to be mansplaining to you about fake friends. The concept of friendship has changed greatly in recent years. Specifically, ever since cell phones and social media became mainstream, most specifically Facebook, which caused people to start calling anyone who they had met a friend even if they weren't so much as an actual acquaintance in real life and don't know anything about them. But back before that, like way back in the 1900s when I grew up, a friend was someone who you not only actually knew, but knew well and were close to. Someone who you would actually spend time with and talk to. And not just because you needed something from them, but simply because you enjoyed spending time socializing with them. Back then, we actually used phones to have verbal conversations, to arrange in-person hangouts, which we did frequently with our friends. These days, however, people barely ever do these things at all, and will only text someone, and generally only when they need something from them. It used to be that you could talk to your friends about anything, and would actually share a lot of personal information with them. These days, people don't do such things. They can't be vulnerable with their friends because they aren't really friends. So they have to be very private and closed off. It seems like there is an epidemic of fake friends, just like there's an epidemic of fake love. That everyone is just going around displaying this fake friendliness to each other in an attempt to make social connections that they can use as social currency to try to get things from one another. And people are starting to realize this and are now becoming more socially guarded and suspicious of friendly people. So even if there are any genuinely friendly people left who would make genuine friendships, no one will connect with them either. The general pandemic we're in is one of social toxicity that comes from narcissism and sociopathy. Just as how us men talk about our fears of getting used by women who pretend to like us only to lead us on, exploit us, and then leave us once we've been used, well, we have to worry about that from everyone else now too, not just women. And it seems that women have always had to worry about this from their female friends since female social circles are extremely Machiavellian and sociopathic. And now somehow this toxic social tendency that women had has spread to us men through social media. I first saw this type of behavior when I got into personal development and would notice that my friends from high school who wanted to continue living like teenagers instead of growing up and being adults and just wanted to hang out and party and drink and do drugs, they would try to hold me back from my self-improvement. It was as if the people who I thought of as friends, my very own social circle, was really just a bunch of crabs in a bucket trying to hold me down at their level. So. I would end our friendship and seek out new friends who were a level up from them in maturity, but would eventually find the same thing happening with them as I would outgrow them too. And so I went from friend group to friend group with the same thing happening with each of them after some time. Many of these people would be really toxic about it and literally shame me for trying to better myself. It went from people saying things like, why do you want to do all that? To things like, stop trying to be something you're not to people literally getting mad at me and trying to break me down with shaming language and lower my sense of self-esteem, saying the types of things that friends shouldn't be saying to each other, but are more like what enemies would say. Then when I started my self-help company and became part of the online self-help community and would be helping clients better themselves or talking to other people who had self-help companies, they would tell me that they had had the same exact experiences with other people trying to shame them for getting into self-development and hold them down too. That was when I realized that it wasn't just me and my experiences with people in my immediate environment, but that people in general are toxic and sociopathic and tend to hold each other down like crabs in a bucket. You see, our whole environment is like a prison or a matrix, if you want to think of it like that, meant to exploit us. And as soon as people see that you are starting to elevate yourself and escape the prison, they will pull you back down to try to trap you there with them. The same people who call themselves friends don't want you to do better than they are because they aren't really your friends. They are your competition, your enemy. There even used to be this term called frenemy, which I had an insight into once when someone asked me and a friend of mine if we were really friends or were frenemies. And I wondered why she would even be asking such a thing because I certainly had shown no signs of being unfriendly towards him. 
And it made me realize that he had probably been bad-mouthing me behind her back, maybe trying to cock-block me. It took me a while to realize this because he seemed like such a nice, cool guy, and I couldn't imagine him doing such a thing. Because, you see, he was one of these new-agey spiritual types, so he seemed really good-natured on the outside, but I was younger then, only 23 or 24, so I was still very naive about people. But the more I got exposed to these so-called New Age spiritualists, the more narcissistic and two-faced I realized that they are. After becoming active in plenty of those types of New Agey communities and getting exposed to countless of these spiritual types who I tried to connect with and cultivate deeper friendships with, I realized that these supposed spiritual types were not deep intellectuals, but were actually highly superficial. I learned the hard way that their friendliness is just a manipulation and their positivity is toxic, and at best, just a mask that they wear. That these types of people would act positive and friendly while having evil intentions and insidious influence. They would act polite and kind on the surface just so they could sink their hooks into someone and try to manipulate and exploit them. Their niceness is like a candy-coated poison. However, when someone like me comes along and speaks more honestly and shows critical thinking and will actually talk openly about negativity and issues and will actually talk openly about negativity and problems, not in an effort to put people down, but to be problem solving and helpful, I would get shamed for it. Many people would rather have backhanded compliments that will keep them stuck than constructive criticism that could actually help them to improve their situation because people with this toxic crab-in-a-bucket mentality prefer toxic positivity rather than helpful negativity. And this type of behavior is not just confined to the New Age community, but this seems to be the prevalent protocol and social manner among fake friends and most of the social world today, especially on social media. And you should know that when you are trying to speak your mind freely and talk about negative experiences and emotions that you have, and your so-called friend tells you to stop being so negative and just cheer up rather than trying to actually support and help you, they are not a real friend to you. But this is what fake people want, to never hear anything seemingly negative, even if it is constructive, and only positive platitudes, even if they aren't truthful and are just toxic and limiting. It's like these people are so superficial that they can't even see what is really truly positive and negative because everything is interpreted at the most surface level face value possible. So. They don't know the difference between positivity and negativity because they haven't looked at these things deeply enough. They would rather have talk that seems positive but is actually putting one another down rather than talking about something negative that will actually help solve problems and bring each other up. They can have totally evil intentions towards one another and be acting very manipulative and toxic, but as long as it is sugar-coated with superficial positivity and politeness, everyone's happy. However, as soon as I come along and start trying to talk about the real issues that we're facing, these types of people will instantly turn on me and become vicious and vitriolic. I used to constantly get shut down by so-called friends and told to stop being negative and just focus on the positive anytime that I was trying to talk about problems and problem solving. And I may even get shamed and insulted for bringing up something negative, yet somehow they wouldn't see their shaming language as toxic. My problem solving was the real problem. So when it came to emotional support from these people, whenever I was going through a terrible situation and my so-called friends would ask me how I was doing and I'd try to tell them about it, they'd cut me off and say, well, if you ever need anyone to talk to, just let me know. And then they'd try to end the conversation there on that high note. And I, well, silly me for thinking that they were my friend and that this was a serious request. And I'd say, well, yeah, I do. I do need to talk about it, expecting that we could just talk about it then, which was why they were asking me how I was doing, so that I could talk about it with them, <laughs> only to find out that I was wrong and that they were just being polite. So I've learned the hard way that politeness and friendliness are very often fallacious, almost always, in fact. Just because someone is being polite and nice doesn't mean they are going to be considerate of your feelings. And just because someone is being friendly and acting like they are trying to be a friend to you doesn't mean that you two are actually friends. Usually, these people are just buttering you up, 
treating you nicely simply because they want something from you and they want to get whatever it is without having to give you anything in return either not friendship or moral support or anything hoping that just the niceness and politeness will be all that it takes you cannot expect reciprocity from these people they are just crabs in a bucket I know all of you listening to this can relate and have probably had these same exact experiences yourself. So I would suggest to you all that you reevaluate your so-called friendships, as I myself have been doing. This year, I realized that there wasn't a single person on social media or in my cell phone at all who was a real friend to me. There was no one out there who I could speak openly with and be real with about my negative feelings and experiences without them shutting me down and responding in a very unsupportive way. So I stopped using all social media and my cell phone entirely. There was no reason to do so. It wasn't a real social life. Real conversations and connections weren't being had. And since I gave these things up, I'm actually feeling much better than I did before. Yes, I'm isolated now, but somehow I feel even less lonely than I did when I was surrounding myself with people I called friends who were really more like enemies and were just bringing me down. But real friends don't bring each other down. They lift each other up. And this doesn't happen through toxic positivity. It happens through honest conversation about the issues that we are facing in the world. Real friends can share their feelings and thoughts and experiences without being shut down or shamed for it. If you can't do these things with someone, they are not your friend. And if they are shutting you down or shaming you for doing so, they are your enemy. And you should really stop conflating these two things, which are by definition supposed to be opposites. There's no such thing as a frenemy. There are only friends and enemies. But oftentimes, our friends are fake. They're enemies in disguise. And you need to be able to discern between the two for the sake of your own mental health. It's better to be alone and isolated than surrounded by two-faced people who are lying to your face and pretending to like you while simply manipulating and exploiting you and waiting for their chance to stab you in the back. At least while you are alone, you are free to do whatever you want and work on yourself and can control your state without having any negative sociopathic toxic influences fuck it all up. I recently thought about all the friends I had thought that I had over the course of my life and re-evaluated them, trying to figure out which ones were actually real friends to me. I came to the conclusion that in my entire life, I have only ever really had one single true friend. And while that is a sad fact, at least I know that now. At least I know what real friendship is, so that I will know who to trust if it ever comes again. So be honest with yourself and others. Stop letting people call themselves friends when they aren't, and are only there to take from you and poison drip you. Let's put an end to the epidemic of fake friendship and make friendship a real thing again. Unplug from social media and cell phones. Cultivate real relationships. That concludes this video. Thanks for listening. I hope I mansplained that good enough for you. If you like what you heard, please click the like button. And if you feel you gained some value from this video and would like to give some back, please do so with the PayPal link below because your support helps fund me doing this work and fight the good fight for men like you. If you are ready to take the red pill and wake up from the matrix and the matriarchy controlling it and learn everything you need to know about female on male sexism, get your copy of my newly released book called Miss Andrea Exposed today. On sale now for a special sale price that won't last long. So check it out by clicking the link below. And otherwise, you can stay tuned for my next video coming out tomorrow, which will be on how to pick up girls in this day and age. And until then, take care of yourselves, men, because no woman out there is going to.